Like you're literally wasting your life. You're wasting your existence. You should be out there contributing to the world, contributing to society, pulling your weight as a human being, leaving the world better than you found it. Is is like really like is is your life going to amount to being a consumer of of goods and services and content? Like is your is your entire personality going to be the things that you consume? What is going on? Welcome back to the Matt Graham Podcast. Today we are back discussing things that will hopefully make you a little bit better today than you were yesterday. We got some questions that were sent in over the past few days, so I'm looking forward to answering them. You know, I kind of like these Q&A sessions. I, I wasn't too fond of them to start out with, but it's forcing me to think about things differently and, and think about uh, different scenarios and it just keeps me sharp and it keeps me on my toes and, and I learn new ways of explaining things and I learn new ways of thinking about things. So I appreciate you guys sending in uh, your questions. And if there are any questions that you would like answered on the show, you can either leave a YouTube comment below if you're watching on YouTube or you can go to notmattgram.com and there's a form for you to submit your questions there. With all that being said, let's dive into these questions. Question number one. Hello, recently found your Instagram. I'm personally going through a difficult time right now and find your account very inspiring. Now for my question, what caused or happened for you to hit rock bottom in the first place and how long did the journey take for you to start to feel better again? Appreciate what you do. So there wasn't really one event that caused me to hit quote unquote rock bottom. And I think rock bottom looks different for a ton of different people. I know people whose rock bottom is far worse than my rock bottom was. You know, some people's rock bottom is losing a limb. Some people's rock bottom is being addicted to drugs and sleeping on the street. And some people's rock bottom is just being depressed and being on medication and going to therapy every week. That was my, that was my version of rock bottom. Um, so with that being said, it was more a lack of maintenance than anything else. So it's like, what happens to a car when you don't use it, right? It gets rusty, things stop working, and it doesn't become a car anymore. It just becomes an, an ornament in a driveway. Much like how when you stop using your body or using your mind and, and, and doing things in the world, you kind of become useless. You kind of become an ornament in your house, right? You don't really become a person anymore. Um, I think that human beings are fundamentally tools to facilitate good throughout the world. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. We're, we're here to facilitate good. We're not here to just quote unquote, enjoy ourselves or to be happy, whatever that means. I don't think happiness in the, in the logical, traditional sense that a lot of people think about it in, which is basically just like perpetual joy. I don't think that's real. I don't think that is a version of reality that you should strive for because there are going to be times where life is miserable. There are going to be times where you're stressed out. There are going to be times where you don't know what to do and, and things get really hard. But in any event, um, what happened to me was basically I stopped doing the things that I knew make me happy, right? I've always had a work ethic, as I've said multiple times on this podcast. I've always been a work guy. I need to be busy. I need to be doing stuff. I don't feel real happy when I'm just sitting around. And I sat around a lot. I smoked a lot of weed. I played a lot of video games. I watched a lot of Netflix. I stopped prioritizing my career. I stopped doing all the things. I stopped working out. Uh, I stopped going outside. I stopped doing so many things that made me, me. So between like, you know, 18 and 19 years old, like I was a very ambitious, hardworking individual. I made a lot of advancements in my career early on. And then basically what happened was I just stopped doing that. I just stopped doing that entirely. But it took me a very long time to put two and two together. It took me a very long time to realize that the fact that I stopped doing the things that made me happy in the first place was actually the reason why I was so miserable. That took me a very long time to put together. Uh, it wasn't until I started listening to guys like Andy Frisella, Jordan Peterson, uh, you know, David Goggin, you know, you know the names, right? That teach you that responsibility is your job as a human being. Like you're supposed to do stuff. You're supposed to be responsible for things. That is, that is the, that is what humans have always done. And, um, yeah, so that's kind of what caused me to hit rock bottom. It wasn't one event. It wasn't, you know, this thing that happened that just like my life instantly became miserable. It was just a lack of maintenance. I stopped doing the things that made me happy. And then I thought the feelings that, that 
happened as a result of not doing those things anymore were innate. I thought they were genetic. I thought they were just something that was always inside of me that, you know, just became apparent. They just appeared. Uh, but in reality, it was because I stopped being a person. I stopped contributing. I stopped pulling my weight. I stopped working out. I stopped going to, I didn't stop going to work, but I stopped working as hard. I stopped making achievements and it makes you feel like a loser. And then if you don't put, make those connections, if you don't look at my life and say, oh, well, all these actions that I used to take, I'm not taking anymore. And now my life is miserable. Um, you know, if you don't make that connection, then you're just going to think that you are a loser, that the feelings that you have of being a loser are just innate. I honestly thought that it was, you know, egg before chicken and not chicken before egg, right? I thought that the feelings that I had were the reason why I stopped doing the things that I normally do. But in reality, me not doing the things that I was normally doing were, was the reason for my feelings. So with all of that being said, the turning point was around 2020. So, and the reason it was 2020 is because obviously the world kind of lit on fire and, and a lot of things were happening and a lot of information was rising to the surface and it wasn't very clear what was going on in the world. And so you had to do some digging in order to find out the truth. And, um, one of the truths that I found out was what we ought to be prioritizing as human beings. I was told all throughout high school, all throughout middle school, all throughout my life that you should prioritize happiness, your own personal happiness, whatever that may mean. And for me, like I liked playing Fortnite. I liked smoking weed. I liked watching Netflix. But in reality, those things actually made me miserable. I thought that these short-term pleasures, these things that in the moment make me happy, but in reality, they were making me miserable. And so I didn't find that out. I didn't make that connection until 2020, which is crazy to me that it took me that long to figure that out, but it is what it is. And I made this one distinct connection that kind of made everything click. I saw the world in a position where there was so much chaos, there was so much confusion, there was so much anguish within the people. And I'm like, what is causing all this? What is causing this chaos? What is causing this disruption? And what I found it was, was all the same things that were making me miserable. It was all the same activities and habits and mindsets that were plaguing me. All the things that were plaguing me are also plaguing society. I realized that the mindset that I possessed, which was this short-term hedonistic mindset, was also the mindset of the general populace. And so my desire to change did not come from a desire of me wanting to change. It came from a desire of me looking at the chaos of the world and deciding that I wanted to change that. But... You can't change the chaos of the world if you don't first change yourself. And so I realized that I was never going to do it for me. I wasn't going to fix me because I wanted to feel better. I had tried time and time again to get in shape because I wanted to feel good or because I wanted to look good. I tried that. It wasn't enough. But when I saw it plaguing society, when I feel like we had been lied to, when I feel like short-term pleasures and dopamine had been used as a weapon against us to keep us in the control of the powers that be, whoever you want to say that is, then it made me angry. Then I was like, we need to fix this because we are going to live lives of slavery. We're going to be debt slaves, mind slaves, slaves to propaganda, slaves to inflation, corruption, all of these things that happen throughout society if we don't first figure out how to govern ourselves. So as Jordan Peterson would put it, you have to make sure your room is in perfect order before you criticize the world. And so I spent the subsequent year or two putting my room in order. I got my physical health together. I got my mental health together. I got my finances together. I started getting my room together so that way I can do what I do now which is try to help others do the exact same thing. My honest advice to you would be to not ask yourself, how can I feel better? Because there are a lot of things you can do that are going to make you feel better in the short term that are not going to actually make your life better. 
And so my advice would be to look at the things in your life that are objectively broken. Look at the things in your life that if you fix them, it would tangibly make your life better and figure out how you're going to fix them. Literally take out a piece of paper and write down every area of your life, your physical, your mental, your spiritual, your relationships, your financial, all of these things, write them down and then list everything that is broken that needs to be fixed. And then once you figure out what those things are, figure out how you can fix them and then go about fixing them. And then from there, you'll probably feel a lot better first and foremost, but then because your room is in perfect order, then figure out how you can be of service to others because ultimately service to others is self-service. This may sound self-righteous. This may sound self-aggrandizing, but truly I don't do this for me. I don't do this because I want to make myself feel good. I don't do this to give myself attention. I don't do this to enrich myself If you knew how much money and attention that I actually turn down on a daily basis, you would, you would understand my intentions fully. Um, I do this because I want to see the world become a better place and I'm willing to die on this hill. I'm tired of seeing people be lied to about what they should focus on in life. I'm tired of seeing people be lied to about what is true and what is not. And, um, I'm on a mission to fix that. And so if that means that I have to donate my life to this cause, then so be it. I think that that is what men should do. I think that we should subject ourselves to greater purposes beyond ourselves. I think men and women should do that. I think men and women should do that. I think men and women should subject themselves to something greater than themselves. And I think that is where you're going to find the biggest level of purpose. That's where you're going to find the most meaning in your life. You are not going to be satisfied by just satisfying yourself ever, ever. So I would not even pose the question, how do I feel better? I would pose the question, how do I fix the things in my life that are broken so that I can better serve others? Question number two, when do you think you should take someone's opinion for what you should do into consideration and when do you think it should go in one ear and out the other, specifically with career decisions? So I would say the answer to this question is pretty simple. I wouldn't take advice from anybody who has outcomes that you specifically don't want. So if you're going into business, I wouldn't take advice from somebody who has either never run a business or has failed in business multiple times over. If you're trying to go into a marriage, I wouldn't necessarily take marriage advice from somebody who has failed every marriage that they've ever been in. Um, you know, if they, if they, have outcomes and they have had horrible outcomes every single time, I would observe their outcomes and say, okay, well, here's what not to do. A lot of people might disagree with that and that's fine, but you know, you wouldn't take financial advice from somebody who's massively in debt and broke and makes horrible financial decisions. Why would you do that? The, but you can absolutely learn from those people by observing their behavior and seeing, okay, well, here's what I shouldn't do. And that's about it. Now, as far as people that you should take advice from, people whose advice you should take to heart, it should be the people that have outcomes that you do desire. So if you are trying to lose weight and somebody you know has lost 100 pounds, well, that's somebody you should listen to about how to lose weight because they've done it successfully. If you're going into business and you happen to know somebody that's run a successful business, well, you should be a sponge with that person. You should ask that person questions. And when they have a piece of advice that they'd like to offer you, you should be listening very closely to the answer. Uh, because it's going to provide massive value to you because of the source. They have, they, have, they have applied the information that they're giving you and it's succeeded for them. And so those are the people that I would focus on the most in terms of listening to. So both people can have value depending on how you look at it. But if, if, if they're giving you advice about certain things, then uh, definitely consider the source based on the level to which they have taken the information they're giving you and applied it in a successful manner. Question number three, can you discuss the false need for one to prove themselves to others? I find myself being a know-it-all by sharing information I've read about, etc. I think deep down I do it looking for acceptance from others to be perceived as knowledgeable or likable, but I know it just makes me look arrogant. I'd like to learn how to just be quiet in more situations so my word carries more weight when I actually choose to speak. Thanks for your time. Well, dude, I think you'd hit the nail on the head right there. Like if you want your words to have more value, don't speak as often. And I can totally relate to this, right? Like, because I read a lot of stuff. I talk a lot on the internet. And that's part of the reason why I like having this platform where I can sit here and talk to my heart's 
desire and have people listen to it. Uh, because it, it fulfills my need to speak my mind and, and say what I believe in different conversational settings, because I am the type to, you know, say exactly what I believe the way that I believe it, which can sometimes wrong, rub people the wrong way, especially if you are familiar with my content and you know, the way that I present my ideas, I tell it how it is. I say it exactly how I believe it. I do not mince words. I do not beat around the bush. I do not walk on eggshells. I'm just like, here's how I think it is. And that rubs people the wrong way a lot of the time. I dealt with this a lot, probably a year ago, before I started making this content. And I'm not saying you have to start making content in order to, in order to fix this. But what I am saying is that I definitely did deal with this a year ago or so, probably between 2021 and 2022, because I had learned a lot of new information about the world a lot of new information about uh, personal development and mindset and culture and, you know, the propaganda and all whatever, right? A lot of the stuff that I just talked about in question number one. So I was learning all these things and I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to process these ideas in a, in a, in a way that, uh, you know, allowed me to, to sift through them in conversation because that's how I like to think sometimes is by talking as I, you know, mentioned in the beginning of this podcast. But the problem is people don't really want to talk about that stuff. And, you know, when people are talking about things about like what they're doing this weekend, where they're going to see a movie or they're going shopping or, you know, they are, they're watching a new show. They don't want some guy like me sitting there being like, well, why are you, why are you wasting your time on this brain dead dopamine content? Why are you being a consumer and going out and wasting your money on things you don't need as an activity to receive a dopamine hit? Like you're literally wasting your life. You're wasting your existence. You should be out there contributing to the world, contributing to society, pulling your weight as a human being, leaving the world better than you found it. Is is like really like is is your life going to amount to being a consumer of, of goods and services and content. Like is your, is your entire personality going to be the things that you consume? Are you going to be an amalgamation of the shows that you have consumed? Are you going to be on your deathbed glad that you watched every single show on Netflix that came out? Like, is that something you're going to be proud of? Is that what I believe? Yeah. Can you have conversations like that? No. Do I have people in my life that I can have those conversations with? Sure. Absolutely. But you can't have those conversations with ev- with everyone because some people are happy living that life. Some people are happy, you know, just working their nine to five, having their family, playing with their dog, watching their show and going shopping on the weekends. Like that's, that's what some people are happy doing. It is a tough thing to balance and I'll admit it because I am very opinionated. I have very strong beliefs and I'm not afraid to say that, but I have noticed that it rubs people the wrong way. Now, what I will say is I didn't do any of that because I want people to think that I'm smart. And I know that's something that you pointed out in your question that you want people to think that you're knowledgeable. You want people to think that you're smart. And the first thing I will say is that it's very important that you know that, and I'm glad that you know that, and that you have that self-awareness. And I think you should tame that desire. I think you should tame that, uh, that, that need to, for people to feel that you're smart. But you also mentioned in your question that you want to be perceived as knowledgeable or likable. And I like that you said, or, because those are not the same thing. Um, you're going to be perceived as likable by facilitating a positive experience for people when you're around them. And you mostly do that by talking about them and not you. Um, by asking questions about them and being curious about them and genuinely being interested about them and what they believe and you know what they're up to. Uh, that's how people are going to perceive you as likable. Um, knowledgeable is a different thing. But what I will say is that people don't want advice that they didn't ask for. People don't want to be given facts and information that they didn't ask for. Um, and it does come off as a know-it-all. It does. I think people have a very good radar for that where you're just like trying to be perceived in a certain way. And, uh, it doesn't work. So I would just stop trying. And if you want to actually, uh, feel smart, then be smart. So, and that doesn't require the the approval of other people. That's something that you just do, right? You, you learn things, then you acquire knowledge and you become smarter. You don't get any smarter by trying to convince people that you're smart. So would you rather look smart or would you just be smart? So I would focus all the energy and wanting to be perceived as knowledgeable into actually being knowledgeable and being perceived as likable is not the same thing as I've stated before. So 
when you're in these conversations, stop focusing about yourself. Stop trying to share the information that you know and trying to get people to perceive you a certain way and just be curious about them. Stop focusing on yourself and focus on other people. That is, that is the best piece of advice that I have for that question. And that's the last question that I have. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Once again, if you want to submit your own questions to be answered here on the show, go to notmacgram.com or leave a comment below. Uh, and that's all I got for you guys today. So I appreciate you tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.